Okay, hi everybody. I'm gonna be talking about my recent paper, Characterizing Magnetized Plasmas with Dynamic Mode Decomposition. So here's the outline. I'm gonna discuss what reduced or modeling is and what the dynamic mode decomposition is. Here we're gonna abbreviate it as DMD. Uh, I'm gonna discuss how dominant coherent structures arise in plasmas and nonlinear systems in general. I'm gonna give a brief hit a sigh review where Hidasai is, uh, is a spheromac experiment here at the University of Washington uh, and the experiment with which we test our methods. Then I'm going to show you two results. First, the DMD results in new discovery of 3D coherent structures. And I'm also going to show that we can fully characterize a resistive kink instability from simulations. And I'll discuss a little later why that's uh, such an important uh, thing to do. And here we just have a nice graphic where um, showing a kink instability where normally this would be sort of a nice straight line of a uh, closed flux. But in fact, since it's kinking, both sides are kinking to either direction and uh, uh, breaking the closed flux. So what is reduced order modeling? Uh, very generally, reduced order models are models that map a high dimensional space to a low lower dimensional space. Typically what you might do is take a big set of measurement data, um, for instance magnetic probe data or Thompson scattering data and so on, and then uh, take the SVD of singular value decomposition of that matrix. The dynamic mode decomposition is based on the SVD, but actually restricts the temporal modes to be exponentials. And we expect that this might actually help for plasmas because there are a number of plasma phenomena like linear plasma waves and instabilities, which are known to have an exponential te temporal dependence. Uh, another reason why we might want to use DMD is because a large number of extensions, meaning that if you're an experimentalist, uh, there's a whole host of extensions to tailor uh, the, the method to whatever experimental goal that you might have. Uh, in this paper, we use these sparsity promoting and optimized DMD extensions. So the sparsity promoting uh, extension allows us to get an interpretable model, which is really helpful for physical understanding of the modes that DMD picks out. And the optimized extension is really good for precise reconstructions of the signals. Um, and this is really important if you want to do something like real-time control or uh, forecasting into the future. And lastly, before we move on, uh, just a reminder on the uh, when you take the SVD of a matrix X, you get these matrices U, sigma, V. U contains the spatial dependence, V contains the temporal dependence, and this matrix sigma uh, is a diagonal matrix of singular values, which are essentially weights that uh, tell you how important each spatio-temporal mode actually is. And um, I'm going to mention that once again in just a second. First, uh, I'm going to try and convince you that dominant structures in plasmas are very common. Uh, plasmas are nonlinear, multi-scale. Coherent magnetic and velocity flow structures are ubiquitous and often contain the vast majority of the plasma energy in just a few of those coherent structures. And uh, this is sort of my uh, picture to justify that, at least for the hit -Si experiment. This is the singular value decomposition of a experimental discharge on this experiment. And you can see, so normalized singular values. And you can see there's maybe, you know, four important singular values. And then there's this long tail here that uh, sort of goes off. And this is on a logarithmic scale. Um, and, and so the takeaway from this is with just a few modes, you know, three to five modes, we can uh, describe most of the, uh, in this case, magnetic energy of the plasma. Uh, with just those modes. And this motivates a low dimensional representation of the plasma, and this is where that reduced order modeling uh, that I mentioned in the previous slide is going to come in. So, <coughs> hit aside uh, the experiment. It, it's a driven spheromac and it exhibits large scale coherent velocity and magnetic structures. Uh, I'm going to discuss the geometry a bit, uh, but not dive too deep into the details. His side consists of an axisymmetric main chamber uh, right here, uh, sort of as a donut toroidal device, and it's got these two injectors at the top and the bottom um, that, uh, that we 
the circuits here are not uh, visualized, but we, we put these circuits on them to apply a voltage and a flux through those injectors. And then these waveforms are oscillated with typical frequencies of 10 to 70 kilohertz. And uh, just, just so you know, this is not actually what the experiment looks perfectly like. This is a cross section where we took a slice uh, down, down the top. Um, and you can see in red here, we have these uh, surface magnetic probes. And uh, for our purposes, we're going to take the signals of all those magnetic probes, uh, as well as some internal probes inside the machine, and uh, put those into a data matrix and do the DMD on it. Before we go on, just to describe a little bit about the physics, what typically happens during the experimental shot, uh, a spheromac is formed. This is this uh, nice rainbow colored thing over here. Um, and then it's sustained by the magnetic field that's uh, wrapping through the injectors. So you can see here that these gray lines are line tied through the injector and then wrapping around the spheromac object and sort of perturbing and sustaining it during the discharge. So that's all we're really going to have to know about the experiment to continue with our uh, discussion here. Okay, so um, the first major result is that we find a previously undiscovered mode in these uh, large-scale simulations that we do of the experiment. Um, in fact, we find an interesting mode that's oscillating with twice the injector frequency. And this is, um, from a nonlinear systems perspective, very interesting because uh, it nonlinear systems tend to, if they're driven systems, reproduce the higher harmonics of that driven frequency or quasi harmonics of that uh, driven frequency. And uh, so what we ended up doing is we took this um, uh, DMD mode oscillating at the second injector for injector harmonic. Then we revisited the simulation and found a previously unknown 3D coherent structure oscillating at that harmonic. Uh, in the simulations. And here we actually have, we can, can show you what it looks like. And it has this really interesting spiral structure that uh, sort of loops through the injector mouths and line ties to the other injector. And uh, the center here is rotating around, uh, rotating around at the second injector frequency. So this is really cool to be able to connect this back to a physical structure that we see in the simulations. The other major result here is that uh, we can identify a uh, instability in these simulations which is consistent with a resistive kink instability and we get the full spatio-temporal structure. This is important because uh, kink instabilities are ubiquitous in plasmas and in fact real-time disruption control and mitigation in fusion devices is essential for fusion devices to avoid uh, sort of catastrophic loss of confinement. Um, and so DMD action provides a systematic way to characterize these instabilities without the confounding effects of the rest of the plasma dynamics. Um, so uh, this, is, this is another uh, possible route towards real-time control of uh, instabilities, or in particular here, kink instabilities uh, for these machines. So that, uh, that about wraps up the main results. I'm going to tell you about the conclusions now. Um, as we've seen, the DMD methods appear useful for the characterization of coherent plasma structures and instabilities. And in fact, these methods rely only on a sparse set of any measurement data, making them highly flexible, generalizable, and because they're being computed in this low dimensional space, uh, and, and computed very quickly on this low dimensional space, they're suitable for real time control. So uh, that about wraps it, wraps it up. Thanks a lot for listening, and uh, please email me with any questions.